Some Mississippi mud here, you know what I'm saying? Black and tan. All right, in a huge ass jug, famous slow brewed black and tan porter and pilsner, one quart beer. So yeah, uh, Mississippi uh, Brewing Company, out of uh, Utica, New York. <laughs> oh, damn. For folks who know what black and tan should taste like. All right, let's give this a pour. So I've had this beer uh, probably about 15 years ago or something like that. Um, so this is from Reviewing Under the Influence from way up north. So thanks a lot for that. Um, kind of excited. I haven't had this in a long time and it would be uh, that's a good idea to try this again to see uh, see what I think of it now. Um, Porter slash Pilsner. Let's taste this out. Hmm. Wow. Tastes a lot like I remember. But actually better. It's actually uh, not that bad. But like not really like, no, I'm not, you know, I would assume, you would maybe assume that something this old school would be kind of shitty or whatever, but it's like, um, so there's a transparency. The porter mixed with the pilsner, so it's a little more transparent than any of the porters you you would assume. Got a really cool aroma. Not so much porter or pilsner, almost like a brown ale aroma. Very refreshing. Very drinkable. This is an awesome lawnmower beer. <clears throat> Holy fuck, you could just pound this shit. Not much head on it. Um, it's kind of malty. It's got a fair bit of sweetness to it. Um, like a, a lot of a crystal malt sweetness. It's got a really cool texture and kind of flavor and whole vibe going on in the back. Almost like a like a rubberiness or some shit like like some like a strange just texture about it like you know I don't know a little bit of maltiness a little bit of, of oddness I guess that's from the combination of the pilsner and the, or whatever. <clears throat> Not a whole lot of hops to speak of. 
Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, not getting a whole ton of Pilsner hops. Um, just, it's kind of like a typical craft beer, low hopped brown ale with a, with a, with a way lighter side that makes it uh, very drinkable. Coming off a little bit like, uh, Coca-Cola a little bit. It's got a chocolatey aroma. Um... Definitely unique. I, I remember this beer being exactly like this, and I had it 15 years ago. It is a, a pretty unique thing. Although this is the only black and tan I've ever had. Although you can make your own uh, by con conjoining uh, light and dark beers. And uh, you can get a device, I believe it's called a turtle or some shit, and like certain uh, methods of getting it so that the half the beer is actually light and the other half the beer is actually dark. So you can pour them half and half. This obviously is is has to be mixed, you know, because it comes in a jug, or whatever, you know. Very thirst quenching, very drinkable uh, summer beer. It's so drinkable that you almost forget that it's beer. Uh, it's just major thirst quenching, especially if you, you know, like if you've been out mowing lawns all day. Uh, whatever, you're gonna fucking drink this whole jug of beer in no time. Like, I'm drinking it in no time. Probably gonna walk out of here tipsy, you know, you know but I'm, I'm drinking it, not even registering that I'm probably gonna get drunk from this. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, it's a pretty neat, neat beer. I, I do recommend trying it, for sure. And, uh, imagine if I... Keep this cap in good condition. I can reuse this for a few home brews. I should seal again. Yeah, and that uh, one uh, one uh, liter. Well, it's a quart, so it's uh, actually nine hundred and forty-six milliliters. So it's almost a liter. But you can drink it a lot faster than pop. As for rates, it's pretty hard for me to read it as I get against a black and tan. I've never had much pre-mixed black and tan before. I didn't, I've never made my own, but as for a beverage, it's not that bad at all. <clears throat> the heads got a little bit of that metallic tang. Lower end craft beer. Brown ales uh, typically carry that. Um, and the Pilsner, I'm not really getting it as uh, big Pilsner hops or anything like that. But it does have some cool textures and cool flavors, some chocolatiness and, and some things going for it. Definitely better than any domestic pale lager that I've ever ever had, really. Um, it's about par with a lot of uh, craft lagers. And um, the the... Porter end of it, I, I'm tasting not really. I guess I taste a bit like a porter. I'm just tasting more like a craft brown ale, uh, a bit on the lower side of that. Or, and there, but there is some some porter aspects to it, I guess. Um, a bit on the lower end, but really, even for a lot of pilsners, seriously, this is better than a lot of pilsners out there. Um, so actually, I'm gonna give it a higher rate than I thought I would. Um, yeah, seriously, uh, it's like an eight, I'm fucking an eight and three quarters of this. Not that fucking bad. It's a little bit watery, a little bit this, so maybe, yeah, you know what? I'm going to take another drink and then I'll fucking read it. How about that? It's tricky. It's got not a bad finish. So, so there's some great stuff going on here, and then there's some weird stuff. A little bit of mass-produced craft things going on. Some weird things going on between the, the lager and the, and the ale and all that. Maybe they pitched one yeast in here. I'm not really sure what the fuck they did. <coughs> Anything's possible. Damn. I'm going to solid eight and a half it. 
But keep in mind, that's kind of a neat thing that's going on here. It's kind of a cool thing. Eight and a half out of 11. Yeah, definitely worth a shot. Definitely pick this fucker up and try this out. Especially on a hot day, you don't think a dark beer would be nice for lawnmower beer? You could put this shit back like no problem. Eight and a half, probably one of the most drinkable beers out there. And I'm out. Yeah.